Are we up yet? Yeah, we're live. Excellent. Hi guys, I'm joined this week by Duck and we're going to be talking all about the gas station hoax. Which, or not. Or not. So if you haven't read the article yet, Duck, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Basically, this is a big deal, uh, particularly in the US, uh, and it's a, a Facebook warning that's, that's circulating virally. And here's how it goes. I'll show you. I hope you can see that. I got it the right way around. I'll read off my card. What it says is, when you pull up to a gas station to fill your car, search your phone for Bluetooth devices. If a sequence of letters and a sequence of numbers shows up in the list, do not pay at the pump. One of the pumps has a card reader installed. They mean a card skimmer, you know, a card stealer. All card skimmers are Bluetooth. So that's the warning. Right. It sounds quite dramatic. It does sound dramatic. So is this a Facebook hoax or is there truth to it? Well, there is a strong element of truth. Firstly, card skimming is still fairly prevalent, particularly in the US where people still have cards with magnetic stripes and still use their mag stripes a lot. The idea is any device where you swipe your card to pay has a card reader and when there's a skimmer installed, loosely speaking, what it means is some crook has attached a secondary reader to the primary reader so when you swipe your card it gets read twice. Once legitimately, say at the gas pump to pay for your fuel, and once by the crooks and they then save that data and do something with it and gas stations in the US have been particularly targeted recently because obviously when you're paying at the pump when you because in the US you have to pay before you deliver dispense the fuel when you're paying at the pump obviously the readers in the pump and that means that a crook who wants to tamper with the pump doesn't have to go inside a shop inside the store or inside a pub or a club behind the counter and mess around with the devices so gas stations have been targeted they have been targeted by skimmers, and some skimmers do use Bluetooth as a way of sending the data, the stolen data, from the pump to a crook who's sitting nearby. That means the crook doesn't need to go up to the pump to retrieve the device. So there is an element of truth in this. Um, however, there's some rather poor advice mixed in at the same time. So is the advice that if you see an unusual Bluetooth sequence that you should go inside or is that misleading? Well, that, there, there are actually two main problems with the advice. Let, let's look at that particular issue first. Let's say you do get a Bluetooth list. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, this is my example. Now I've made up some of the names in here. Some of them are completely legit. So that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on my iPhone. And you'll see, you usually see when you do a Bluetooth list, you'll see things like my iPhone, Ed's iPhone, so-and-so's Galaxy and so forth. Now you'll see in that list, there is a device, and I didn't do this at a, at a fuel station. There's a device there, MAC-15. Now that's a sequence of letters of numbers. Should I panic? Is there a skimmer? Should I run like crazy? And the answer is no, that's just somebody who's got a 15-inch MacBook and they've called it Mac 15 just because it's a short and simple name. So the problem is a sequence of letters and numbers in a name doesn't mean it's a skimmer. The other thing is that the Bluetooth device, if the skimmer is using a Bluetooth device and the crook's got his or her wits about them, there's no reason why they have to give it a name that's just letters and numbers. They could put the skimmer in the pump and they could just give it the name my iPhone and you'd be none the wiser. So if you see that sequence of letters and numbers, it doesn't mean you're seeing a skimmer. You might be, you might not be. So you might be panicking over nothing. On the other hand, if you are worried about skimming at the pump, where you're paying at the pump because the pump's outside and it may be easier to tamper with it, at most fuel stations, you do have the option to go in and pay at the cashier. It's a little bit more hassle. My understanding in the US, it's more hassle than it is, say, in the UK, because you have to go in and pay first. And if you're really that worried about skimming in general, then, you know, you can always pay with good old bills. Get those banknotes out and use those instead. So the, if you see letters and numbers, it doesn't mean you're seeing a skimmer. And the fact that you're not seeing a letters and numbers sequence doesn't mean there isn't a skimmer if you get the double negative. Definitely. So LJ here, hi, asked a really great question, which is if it's not just via Bluetooth, how else can we identify skimmers? Well, that's the problem, and that's the real bad bit of this advice. It's that very last sentence where it says, all card skimmers are Bluetooth. That's really misleading and really worrying because it implies that if you have a Bluetooth a device that can scan for other Bluetooth devices, like mobile phones can, then you have at your disposal a completely effective defeat them all card skimming detector in your pocket at all times, and you don't. Because 
There are skimmers that use wireless Wi-Fi. There are skimmers that use mobile phones, so they actually either send a text message or do a mobile phone upload over the cellular network. And there are plenty of skimming devices that keep it really simple. They save the data over a period of time. It may be hours or days or even weeks for a well-hidden device. They save it to an SD card, and then the crooks come back later and they steal all those card numbers in one go. So that's the problem. There's no absolutely foolproof way that you can detect a skimmer, and you certainly can't always and reliably do it just using a mobile phone. So that's where this advice could be misleading could give you a false sense of security. The best thing you can do if it's a place where you swipe your card is you can take a good look at the device. Does it look as though it's been tampered with? If there's a seal nearby, because I'm understanding in US gas pumps where the card reader is, there's usually a, a key slot where you can open up to service the reader. Those often have a supposedly a tamper-proof seal. Now, the fact that the seal's intact, the person who put the seal on could be the crook, you don't know, so it doesn't tell you anything. But if it looks like it's been fiddled with, if the lock looks as though it's been jimmied, then maybe that would be a, either a good gas station to avoid or one where you should go in and pay. But the big deal is just looking for funny Bluetooth names at a gas station or anywhere else, it will give you loads of false positives. You'll find devices that are not skimmers, and there's no reason why a skimmer should show up at all. And even if it does, there's no reason why the crook can't just call it my iPhone, and then you'll be none the wiser. Cool. So with having your Bluetooth on, if that was the way that you were checking, is there any risk to you by being discoverable on Bluetooth? Oh, you mean if you go, right, I'm going to assume that all skimmers are Bluetooth, mm -hmm. I've got this fantastic Bluetooth detector, I always leave Bluetooth always on on my phone for that purpose. Well, if you generally have decided that having Bluetooth on is cool and you're happy with that, then using your phone as a Bluetooth detector to look for crooks out there, why not? Should you leave Bluetooth on all the time? I don't, in the same, for the, exactly the same reason that I don't leave location turned on all the time on my phone, on the grounds. I don't want, I know when I want to be discoverable, and when I don't want to be discoverable, I figure, do I really want my phone telling everyone else, you know, my phone is here, my phone is there. Sometimes I don't mind. Generally, by default, I kind of figure those things are best turned off. The other fantastic reason for turning off GPS and Bluetooth and even Wi-Fi, if you can, while you're not using it on your phone, is not just that you won't get tracked so easily, it does wonders for your battery life. So the answer is there's, there's no law that says you shouldn't have Bluetooth on all the time. Some people love it. Some people live by letting their buddies know where they are all the time. But if you can rein that in a little bit, it does mean that you're reducing the extent to which uh, you know, advertising companies and shops and chain stores and things like that can keep an eye of, oh, you went in this store today and that store yesterday. It's the same person visited here and then they went to a competitor, etc. So you might as well, if you're worried about being tracked in the same way that people like incognito or private browsing mode from time to time in their browser, do consider turning Bluetooth off. You don't need to have it on all the time. Perfect, that's all um, for today then. Hi to Karen from Phoenix, thanks for joining us. And Hi everybody Karen. Everybody else who's watched. And if you do have any questions later on, then please do comment them below and we'll get back to you. We will. Thanks guys, bye. Stay secure.